Guys, where we are right now is we are in the Paris street, uh, which should make the Parisian feel at home, uh, because this is meant to be inspired by the Champs Elysees, the way that we have trees and expensive shit all over the place. Jade 
church or St. James's Church, depending on which translation you're going by. It should be St. Jacob's, but I found that most English maps call it St. James's. Just telling you in case you ever do want to go inside. Um, but that's when it does come to St. Uh, St. James's Church, what it's most famous for is for an ancient legend from the 15th century. As the story goes, inside you would have a statue of the Virgin Mary, a life-size version of the statue uh, that was very inspiring. And by inspiring, I mean she had a golden necklace on her neck. Uh, that people try to steal. So there he goes. There's a young man who sees the statue. He wants to steal the necklace. So he. All right. Let's. Uh, if I can get you guys into this parking spot, basically, get you guys slightly closer. Which is right outside of Charles University, which is established by who, when, what you guesses? Charles. Yes, I thought you guys something. Yes, Charles was born in the 14th century. Um, and uh, before I speak about the uni, I'll speak a bit about uh, drunk people. <laughs> they uh, they have the bodies, the bodies of men but they have Thank you so much for making my life easier. Nothing is worse than somebody yelling the wrong answer. But a strange amount of confidence. Uh, I, I want the same guy who yelled pirates, he also yelled beef bump. Then he yelled beef bump. He yelled beef bump. He yelled beef bump. So I got my dad a dog a couple of years ago. I've been tired to like a max and whatnot. And I really wanted to call her beef bump, but he said that's an inappropriate name for Prague's dog. Anyway, the story of Mozart in relation to Prague starts off not over here, but in Vienna, at the premiere of the marriage of Figaro. Remember one thing from my tour, and one thing only, and that would be this, Charles IV, 14th century. The grand majority of every, everything you're going to see in the city was established by Charles IV in the 14th century. If you ever seen an old looking building and you're wondering who built it and when? Uh, any vegans on the tour? I'm so sorry, uh, wrong city. <laughs> uh, we there are there are plenty of fantastic vegan restaurants in Prague. Uh, they just have nothing to do with Czech culture. Uh, we actually do finish off our next a really good vegan burger restaurant called Forkies, F O R K Y S, uh, that I can point out to you if you if you do want to go get a vegan burger. Uh, any vegetarians? Again, I'm so sorry. Uh, if you look closely between the cobblestones, this is grass. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, we, we do have we have one vegetarian dish. We have one vegetarian dish to offer, and that is the fried cheese. Which the Czechs, we are a beautiful culture. We have so much to offer to the world. We are terrible. At uh, <laughs> if, if, if more of the group wants shade, we can move slightly more back. Or is this okay? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so guys, where we are right now is we are at the clock tower of Prague. Uh, it is fairly difficult for me to point and talk at the same time. So uh, I'm just gonna need a head nod that I know we're all looking at the same thing. Everybody see the clock tower behind me? Yeah. Good. Nobody's legally blind, makes my job a lot easier. Uh, in the center of it, the complicated mechanism with the blue circle, red circle, black circle, that is astronomical clock. Everybody see that one? Cool. Yeah. To the right there are two statues, and to the left there are two statues of the astronomical clock. The statue on the furthest left for you guys should be a guy with a golden hat looking at himself in a golden mirror. Everybody see that one? Yep. Those four statues all together are meant to represent the three mortal sins of man and death. Starting from the far left, we have the sin of vanity. The guy looking at himself in a mirror, basically the modern equivalent of somebody with a selfie stick. To the right of him, we have the sin of greed, which is shown as a Jewish moneylender. You might be thinking, Mike, that's a pretty anti-Semitic portrayal of the Jews. And the answer is, yeah, it's from the 15th century, a time when this area was feverishly anti-Semitic. We'll speak more about that in the second half of the tour when we go to the Jewish quarter. In the center, we have the astronomical clock. I'll get to that in just a second. Uh, on the right side, the first statue we have is a skeleton with a bell and an hourglass. What could that possibly represent? What guesses? You are correct, death. Um, which I always do ask, it's a fairly obvious question, it's a skeleton, of course it's that. Uh, but I always do ask the group though, because every once in a while, somebody will yell the wrong answer with a level of confidence that only exists within the American school system. Uh, I had a guy once yell, pirates! <laughs> which, you look at his country on a map, not a lot of pirates to be done here, we're completely landlocked. But yes, we have that, and to the right of that, we have a Turkish prince, and that is meant to represent infidelity. 
Turks, non-Christians, seen as the infidels, as a sign of infidelity. Now, every hour on the hour, there is a show, which, by the way, we won't be catching it on the tour, uh, partially because of the timing, but also it is absolutely miserable being a tour guide here when the hour is full, because there's about 2,000 people all spread out here, all yelling at the same time. Uh, but what I will do is I will describe to you what happens during the show, so when you do see it on your own, Again, it's every hour on the hour. Uh, you can check it out. Uh, and you can think back to my calm, screaming voice. So exactly what each different part means. So um, every hour on the hour, we have the three mortal sins. Vanity, greed, and infidelity. They all shake their heads, no. Meanwhile, death tolls its bell, shakes the sour glass, and shakes his head, yes. What this is meant to represent is that death is saying there are three mortal sins. Hey, guys, it's time for y'all to die. To which they all say, no, death, please give us one more hour. And death says, okay. You have one more hour every hour on the hour. It's the I'll do it tomorrow by Clock Tower. Now, right above that, we got two blue doors. They pop open, and you see the 12 apostles of Jesus Christ walk by. And then finally, the crown jewel of the Clock Tower show it's a golden rooster that extends, flaps its wings, and goes cock a doodle doo, or kikiri ki, or kurupu ku, or karakaka, or whatever sound a rooster makes in your native tongue. That's the sound that it makes. And people down here, they clap with a singular tear coming out of their eyes, saying, this is the highlight of my entire existence. I can die happy now. Uh, has anybody ever seen the show? Yeah. Is this an accurate description? Oh, yeah. This man is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> when I say that the statues shake their heads, no. They do shake their heads, no, but they shake their heads, no, like 15th century statues, i.e., like this. Uh, when I say the 12, the 12 apostles of Jesus Christ, there are 12 biblical-looking figures, uh, but the most disappointing part is the golden rooster that extends, and I kid you not, by like this much. Clap his wings like this, and then the sound that it makes can only be described as... <laughs> <laughs> and then you have like 2,000 people out here, which by the way, it's, it's not that sunny today, but usually uh, during like the heavy summer season, there is no shade here. We have like an ambulance parked over there, families of five turn to families of three because people waited for 30 minutes to get a good spot to see that thing. And then they wait for 30 minutes for 15 seconds of this. And then they get really angry and they write like the craziest TripAdvisor reviews in the entire world, like seven paragraph long reviews. And for this reason, it is said that according to TripAdvisor, this is the second most disappointing tourist attraction in all of Europe. By the way, if you're wondering, number one is meant to be the Mona Lisa. According to all the reviews, they say it's too small. Number three is meant to be the Little Mermaid out in Copenhagen. According to all the reviews, they say it's too small. Number two is meant to be the Clock Tower show in Prague, because according to reviews, it's not impressive enough. Which, you know, in the modern day, this was built in the 15th century. We have iPhones now. This will not blow your mind. However, we have many engineers in the tour, judging by the amount of Germans we have on the tour, that statistically we have to have at least half the tour uh, engineers. Um, then this still functions on approximately two-thirds of all of its original parts. Approximately. Which is an engineering marvel, but if you're not, not an engineer, you probably don't care that much. So let me point out a better way uh, to take in the show. I recommend you watch it twice. Once from down here, see what all the fuss is about. Second time, from up over there. It is 250 crowns to get up to the top. That's exactly 10 euros. Which, by the way, fairly standard for our entry fees into museums and viewpoints and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and if you're up there, if you like snapping pictures, you get to see all the old towns on like a high vantage point. Great for snapping pictures. But also, if you do go up there, I recommend going up there about 10 minutes for the full hour. Because 10 minutes for the full hour, this area like crowds with people from all across the world, every race, every religion, every continent represented. And 10 minutes for the hour, they're all being adults, arms crossed, fighting social crises. But about five minutes for the show, people start smiling and they start showing each other their watches and the couples put their arms around each other. People lift up their kids and everybody's filled with this childlike excitement about the show that's coming up. And then the show happens, and there is no other place in the world you can watch this many people from all across the world all get disappointed at the exact same moment, which to me is its own tourist attraction, but also I might just be a bit of a sociopath. Um, and when I answer the prominent question I get about the clock towers, Mike, how do we tell time if we're in the Old Town Square? Use the phone. Uh, but Mike, we want to use the clock tower. Cool. We added the second clock there in the 18th century to so tell the time. But Mike, I want to use the bottom part of the clock tower to tell the time. Great. In the 19th century, black on white, over on the left side, we added the second clock, and then a third clock over on the right side as well. After this job for nine years, I've learned that if I go into the 15-minute description of how to be time from this, half the tour goes into a mild clinical coma. If you are religious and ask me one-on-one, -on -one, uh, but what I'll just do, I'll just point out a couple of really cool things about the astronomical okay. clock instead. You guys, look at the blue circle, red circle, black circle. Everybody see those? There is a sun handle. It's a handle with the sun on it. That will show you where the sun is currently in the sky. Blue means uh, day, red means dawn or dusk, black means it's night. There's a second handle, which I think is a white ball right now. Yep, 
uh, and that is the moon handle that will actually spin around as the moon phases change uh, and it will travel through the different astronomical signs showing you what sign is currently in season which again still functioning on approximately two-thirds of all of its original parts it's an engineering marvel uh, it's not super accurate because we have like summertime and all that sort of stuff but again if you guys are looking to know the time use your phone if you do want to make your life really really difficult uh, a bunch of smartphones have like the widget app where you can get this onto your phone so whenever you run late somewhere you can be like ah oh, a prog astronomical clock but you'll still be late uh last thing i want to point out while we're in this kind of crowded square is that building right over there that is the church of our lady before the teen a beautiful beautiful church where the main question that i get about it is like how do i go inside because people do a circle around it not find a door do a second circle around it still not find a door and then just give up go drink beer standard movement for prog uh, but when it does come to this church if you guys look at um Sometimes during like religious holidays, they'll open up the back doors to make entry more obvious and easier. But on regular days, uh, to get inside, it's a bit of a strange path. If you guys look there, you can see big buildings uh, blocking the front of that church. Everybody see them? They used to be a monastery that was sold into private ownership over and over and over and over and over again. What we have there today is a art uh, gallery and also like a very, very mediocre pizza slash coffee place. And if you want to enter that church on a regular day, you got to walk through the pizza slash coffee place. Skip the pizza, skip the coffee, check out the church. It is a very, very nice church. Also, welcome to the second most atheist nation in the world. Uh, we recycle all of our archives. Uh, with that said, guys, you want to make our way off in that direction so we can speak a bit about being... We don't have enough room for God in our hearts because we like our fried food, we like our beer, and a bunch of other things where it's way too early in the day to talk about. Uh, but that is not very historic. The second answer... That's for dramatic tension. Something tells me there's going to be a lot of strange sounds on the street on this one. my heart. Uh, the second answer looks at a communist regime. Now, between 1948 and 1989, there's a single party totalitarian state over here run by the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia. Okay, good. We got we got a, we got a healthy democracy over here. So those of you that want to send me one of on the tour, uh, we got Austria over here, I believe. Uh, we got Texas. Uh, we got. Uh,
We kindly ask passengers of boarding group 5 and all remaining passengers to board. Nyní žádáme cestující v nástupní skupině 5 a všechny ostatní. We would like to welcome you on your Lufthansa, Star Alliance, Air Canada, Etihad Airways, Singapore Airlines, TAP, and United Airlines flight LH-16895 to Munich. We kindly ask passengers with babies or children up to the age of five, passengers with reduced mobility,
Final call for the passengers on Ryanair flight MR615 to Gothenburg gate 617.